So welcome to the LIBV RStats Club. So today um, I'm gonna talk about this website called Spatial LIBV. Um, that's because um, I received a request to explain a bit more what this website can do. And it's kind of like a um, nice timing because the paper describing the data in this website was published uh, Monday last week. Um, and so here I put two links. One of them is for um, the actual uh, Shiny app and then uh, that, or the web application that I'll mention. And then another one is for the slides that I have. So I'm gonna open the second one speaker deck. Um, and so here, this first presentation has some um, slides from a talk I gave uh, last month. Um, um, and so I'm gonna jump through them a little bit, just explain what the data for this particular application is showing. So this is from a project that I mean, I mean, it's now published. Um, it's from a paper that is uh, with Kristen Maynard and me and other people that is now published, but the preprint is available and by archive. Um, and so the idea here was, um, it, it was like our pilot study using um, a special transcriptomics technology from the Tenex genomics company called, um, uh, the particular assay is called Visium. And so this is the first time we were using it. And it's actually, a, this project was in partnership with Tenex Genomics. Uh, um, and so how we piloted this data was like, um, we got slices from the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. You can only get like a tiny square. It's like six millimeters by six millimeters. Um, and so we got like tiny squares from a region of the brain of the, of the VLPSC that has a very like known layer uh, pattern. Um, um, so it has six layers, one to six, and then white matter. Um, and so with this pilot data, um, we actually generated um, uh, 12 Visium slides from three different donors. Um, and so for every donor, we generated slides like, well, first two pairs that are next to each other, and then two other pairs that are also next to each other, but are 300 micrometers away from the original pair. And so we call these pairs spatial replicates or spatially adjacent replicates. Um, um, and so this is the data that we generated with, uh, 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 with Kerry Martinovich, Andrew Jaffe, Stephanie Hicks from uh, Hopkins Biostatistics, and Lucas Weber, who's a post with Stephanie. Um, uh, along with the people from Tenex. So, um, um, so I mean, this set of slides explain a, explain a bit more what um, what the project was. But I'll jump into the actual uh, website. So this is uh, uh, on the Google Doc for um, the Art Club. That's this, this uh, first link. Um, and so, special LIBD um, is the name actually of a biconductor package. Um, um, that allows you to like use the data um, and to also like visualize new data. Um, and so right now we are working with a, on a project with like um, several people at Lever and also at Hopkins um, analyzing like new Visium data. Um, however, right now what I'm gonna focus more is on the actual uh, website. This website is made using R. That's, I mean, I guess it ties into the R club, right? Um, um, and uh, it's available in multiple locations. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the main version of it, uh, which is spatial.libd.org forward slash spatial LIBD. But it also is available for a couple of mirrors of shiny apps. And that's because this website like uses about like three gigabytes, sometimes maybe even four gigabytes of RAM per user. So this main one here is actually uh, hosted on Amazon. So that's a little bit of the technicality of what it is. Um, and like this website here shows you a little bit how you can download the data, how you can visualize it. Now, the main thing you might be interested in here is at the very top, there's two panels. One of them 
called spot level data, another one called layer level data. Um, and so it's almost like these are two different web applications inside of, of this um, website. We're gonna look at the spot level data one first. Um, um, and so this is the one where we will be able to visualize every single um, spot for 12 museum slides. And so um, here at the very beginning, it shows like a little bit of like a brief documentation of uh, what's happening here. Um, and it just shows like some common options. Um, and it describes a little bit of like the different parts, the different panels. But this is like a lot of text, right? That's like what you would read if you if you if I wasn't giving a demonstration. <laughs> um, and so let's jump directly to the clusters static view. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see it all. Um, well, let me zoom in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> this little tab here allows you to explore um, for a particular museum slide, we have 12 in, in this data set, all of the spots that overlap tissue and what is their cluster membership. So on the top left here, we have samples to plot. The, we have 12 different sample IDs. So let me show, for example, 15, 16, 73. And so this will automatically load that data. And right now what it's showing me is the special LIDD um, clusters, uh, sorry, layers. Um, so this is actually um, layers that uh, Kristen Miner uh, manually assigned to every spot. But we can also look at some other clustering results. So let's say we wanna look at um, a graph-based cluster that we did using, let's say seven clusters. Um, and so here we can visualize those cluster results. Um, and so, you know, this is helpful if, um, if people wanna see these data and like, and basically like, there's a lot of different plots you can make. And the idea of this website is that it, it helps other people to, to make those plots without like having to ask anyone like, hey, can you open the data for me in R? Can you write the code for me to, to making that plot, right? Um, so this cluster static is maybe not as interesting. In a similar way, we have the gene static version, which allows you to visualize, instead of discrete data, this is gonna allow us to visualize continuous data. So for example, here we're visualizing by default, the number of cells that we have in every single spot. Um, so let me change here um, to, for example, MOVP. Um, you, you can type either the gene name or the ensemble gene ID. Uh, either of them will show up. Um, and so here, MOVP will automatically plot, you know, will automatically get a plot here for that particular gene. We're seeing the log cost for that gene. And let's say we actually like this plot, we want to share it with, with any, someone else. We can click here on the top on the download PDF button. Um, and then here it creates a file. Uh, you can't really see it because it's kind of small right now, but it says special library static gene. It includes the gene name, and then it includes the actual date when you made this plot. Um, um, and so now you can have the PDF on your computer um, and share it with someone else, right? Um, you can also say like, okay, maybe I don't want to see the counts. Maybe I want to see the log, uh, instead of the log counts, I want to see the actual counts. Um, uh, and maybe like, I wanna just see the spots that have over um, 10 or more counts. So here I can specify a minimum count volume. Um, and so this automatically then updates, updates the plot. As so you can kind of filter the spots. And we have actually two color schemes. The default one is the Veridis color scale, uh, which is um, color blind, colorblind friendly. However, we also made this other color scale um, um, that um, we manually chose these colors because we found that they had a good contrast with the histology information, which is shown on, on the background as like these like shades of purple and pink. Um, um, so this is like the color scale that we actually use on the paper. 
but um, but like anyone can come here and remake a lot of the plots that we have on the paper using the Veridis scale, for example. Um, so either cluster static or gene static, those are the versions for visualizing either um, 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 static um, 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 discrete variables or continuous variables. Um, similarly, there's two more tasks here called cluster grid static and gene grid static. So I'm gonna, only gonna demonstrate the cluster grids here. And so what is this doing is, is making the same thing, but now it's actually making a grid plot. And by default, this grid is gonna have one row and three columns, but I can, for example, plot everything with three rows, four columns, and select all the different samples in the study. Um, now this takes a bit of time to run. So that's why on, on, uh, on the grid plots, um, we have this button called update grid plot that you need to manually click before um, the PDF or the image here is made, uh, is re-rendered or like displayed. Um, and that's because like, as you increase the number of samples that you wanna plot, it takes longer to make the plot here. Um, 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 and so, okay, here, now we can see it. Um, and so this is particularly useful um, if you want to see, for example, the results of um, some cluster algorithm you, that you ran across all your samples. Um, 10X Genomics provides a software called Loop for visualizing your Visium data also. Um, and, but that one is meant to visualize one slice at a time. And so here, for example, we ran this graph-based clustering approach across all of the 12 images. And so, for example, on 15, 15, you can kind of see maybe a little of the clusters corresponding to different layers. However, for example, in 15, 16, 70, uh, most of the data is dominated by this second cluster, um, which is not as prevalent uh, on the 15, 15, sample, right? Um, so this is how you can like try to explore a bit how your clustering results are going. Um, um, and so like, let me change actually the type of cluster. Um, um, let me add clusters. So I'm gonna use it with, uh, let's say 14. Um, um, so this has to remake the plot and because it, there's a lot of points, every single slice has, can have up to like 4,096 points or something like that. Um, and so across all, all of the images, it's in the order of 40,000 spots to 50,000. Um, so yeah, here we can see like the results of some graph of a graph-based clustering where we're cutting them to 14 different clusters. Um, and if you, if you start to do this, you start to get um, clusters that are uh, really like kind of like sample specific. So for example, um, um, and you can might start to see maybe the, the um, the layer information across across each of these images, um, although some of them maybe don't don't, don't look as as good, right? Um, um, uh, like I like, for example, here on the top left, this like orange one with like um, the borders of it being blue, right? Uh, but then like in the middle here, you start to get like more colors, um, right? Um, so that's something you can do, right? Um, and so we have like a couple of different clustering results um, um, across different methods that are described in the paper. So, um, and similarly with a gene grid static, oh, I mean, let me show that. Here we can now make grid, um, we're visualizing the expression of a particular gene. Um, so, um, I think my threshold was too high of at least 10 counts because these first two samples don't have 10 counts of MOBP. Uh, but let me reduce it to, uh, let's say five. Um, grid. Um, 
So like these first two samples barely have any spots for MOVP with at least five counts. It's mostly just one on the bottom right, um, trying on the far right. Um, anyway, you can use um, um, those versions and it, just like the regular clusters or, or, or gene static, you can also download the PDF or the grid. So, so far it's like um, uh, mostly for like, uh, you choose some options on the left that it updates a plot. Now, the more complicated one is this clusters interactive tab. So this is the one that actually we spent more time on making. And so let me change. Um, um, let me change the, um, let me visualize the clusters. Um, and here, let me change the gene. I'm going to choose PCP4. Um, the log counts, minimum zero. Um, I, so what I what is all of this showing here? So here we have four uh, interactive plots that are linked to each other. Um, on the left column, we have whatever variable you chose as a continuous variable, so either a gene or a continuous one. For example, here I chose the PCP4 gene. On the right column, we have um, your um, um, cluster uh, results um, or the, any discrete variable that you want to choose, uh, visualize. So here I'm looking at the layers that were manually signed by Kristen. Um, on the on the top row, we have the, the histology images with either the, on the top left, we have the genes. On, on the top right, we have the clusters. On the bottom row though here, now we have the reduced dimensions across, um, uh, we have a couple um, methods here for reduced dimensions. Here I'm showing the UMAP results, but we also have like PSNE or like you can even look at, I don't know, PCA for example. Um, and so, uh, oops, I guess I create an error here. Uh, um, no. Oh, sorry about that. I reloaded it. Um, DC4. Um, let me show like the T's name perplexity 50 results. Right. Um, so you might want to do this because like, let's say here, I want to manually select. Oh, I don't want to do that, sorry. Um, well, I guess I selected here like a slice of points on the x-axis for the T's name dimension one. And so that will automatically update the points they have selected on the top, right? And so this is kind of interesting because you can see like on the reduced dimensions, like you end up having spots that cluster together based um, actually like on the layers. Um, and so the idea of all of this is, um, um, let me here do a lasso select on the top right. Um, I shouldn't have selected the, the row here. Um, um, I forget how to deselect this. Um, all right, let me just redo my example, sorry. Um, So let me show PC before. Mm -hmm. oh. Um hey, sorry about that. Okay. So <clears throat> um here I'm filtering, for example, for PC before. Um 
And so why am I showing PCB4 here? Um, uh, that's because PCB4, it's a gene that has high expression in layer five. Um, so it's a layer five marker. And so like, for example, here, I can come uh, to the top, select, uh, lasso select, uh, and then manually like draw a line. Um, Kristen is way better at this than me, but like, let's say here I select some points. Um, and so um, on the bottom here, I can provide a guess for these uh, spots. I'm gonna say like PCP4 spots. Um, and on the bottom, I'm gonna click on label selected spots. Um, so if I do that, let me go to the static version. Um, and instead of selecting layers clusters to, to plot, I'm gonna select the, the layer uh, option here. And now we can see we have in white, the spots that I label manually as PCP4 uh, spots. And so this is how um, using this tool, that's how uh, Kristen was able to manually annotate all the spots. And like the end result is this, this is special like the uh, clusters here. Um, um, uh, so this like um, spot annotator, let's say option um, to the clusters interactive is, um, you know, has all the information that Kristen wanted to look at when deciding how to assign each spot to the layer, right? So she looked at a couple of marker genes, um, including PCP4. Um, um, she, uh, like, let's say you want to select, uh, I don't want to do that selection. Um, I forget that the default is to do, um, um, Sorry, that type of selection. Uh, so let me do the lasso select here. Um, and so let's label those as um, um, let's say PCP4, because they're they have high expression PCP4, but they're also like um, I'm just gonna call it like UMAP top or something. Um, because they're on the top part of the UMAP. Um, let's say if I go back to cluster static, let's look at layer. Now we can see those spots where they label them. And so they are all here. They're, they're all actually uh, layer one spots. Um, uh, if we compare to the manually annotated layers from Kristen. Right, so these are this um, uh, pink spots. Um, the gene interactive, uh, we didn't find it as this particularly as useful. Um, uh, but the idea here is like you can also like actually enable um, um, uh, automatic um, labeling by clicking. So I'm just gonna say that here my my label is gonna be click. So if I left click on every single spot. Um, Oh, sorry, I need to click here at the enable uh, option. Um, so I'm gonna click on a couple of random spots. Um, and if I go back to cluster static layer, um, wait, mm, I don't know what, I don't know if I didn't work. Um, Mm. I am, I don't know why it didn't work, sorry. Um, it's supposed to enable updating every single spot. Um, actually, I think I have it here also. 
on the enable layer uh, la layer labeling by clicking on spots. So I call it a uh, click. Maybe it needed to double click actually. Double left click. Um, I haven't used this in a while. I haven't like tried annotating things myself in a while. Uh, yeah, okay. So now you do see some uh, spots I manually clicked. Um, um, all right. Um, so that's what the spot level um, um, version here shows. Um, let's say you actually want to download um, your manual annotations, then you can click here on the left on the download layer guesses. Um, and it will download a CSV file. And later on, uh, you can actually upload uh, that CSV file if you want to resume your work across multiple sessions. Um, on the layer level data, uh, this is showing like more specific results um, based on the um, analysis we did with the spot level data. And so here um, uh, we sue the bulk. So that means we summed up the uh, expression values um, across all the spots uh, for every single gene. And so um, because we have 12 different images, we have maximum 12 layer one like suitable um, samples, let's say. Um, uh, not all the not all the samples had, for example, layer two. Uh, so you can see there's only one, two, three, four, eight loop points instead of twelve. Uh, but here we can see, for example, the either the PCA um, uh, results um, uh, using the suitable data, and this was particularly nice because PC um, PC one is mostly like the uh, gray dots or dark. Um, darker dots versus the colored dots. And so that's why matter versus everything else. PC2 is order like on the bottom here, we have layer one, then layer two, three, four, five, and six. So it's kind of interesting that we see the layers that way in this uh, PC plot. Um, 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 you can also look at um, um, some box plots for, um, uh, with statistics. Um, uh, so we had a couple of different models. So one of them is what we call the enrichment model, which is testing one particular gene, sorry, one particular layer against all the other layers together. So that's doing like a t-test. Uh, we have the pairwise results also, which are showing for, showing for example, like here la layer one versus layer two. Uh, but also we have the uh, yeah, ANOVA, which is like just Telling us like, are any is there any variance across the different layers? Um, so we have all those results um, for um, for um, our pseudo bulk uh, data across the different layers. Um, and again, we can change the color scale. Um, uh, we actually talked a lot about different colors here. Um, um, and like some versions of the colors look better on some screens or some formats than others. Uh, so actually, I think we use this one uh, in some of the figures, the blue and red with everything else that is not being tested in gray. Um, so this might be something you, like, you know, let's look at MOVP. Um, um, so here we can see that, um, that let's look at white matter versus layer two, for example. And so here we're testing white matter versus layer two. Um, and it has like a pretty big p-value. I mean, pretty small, sorry, p-value. Because um, it's so different between one or the others. Um, so this is how like you can try to explore the different marker genes based on uh, the different layers. So here like, Quite matter versus everything else um, has a p-value of you know, uh, something to the 10 to the minus 22, right? Um, and that's because these are like a very well-known like uh, quite matter marker. Um, 
Um, and we can see here the data that it behaves kind of as expected. Um, so here you can explore a lot of the statistical results. Um, you can also um, um, check, for example, if you have a, a, a gene list. And so here there's an example file for, for that. Um, uh, so if you have assembled gene IDs, um, and you can have a table of them where every column is a different um, uh, gene list. Um, so here we have, for example, Safari all, Safari high, et cetera. We have a bunch of different IDs. Um, and so if you load that file, uh, right now he's showing that same file, I think already loaded. Um, you can ask, are those genes enriched in the genes that are markers for the different layers um, um, across the different like um, uh, statistical models here on the left. Um, so let's look at the enrichment ones, for example. And so what it's showing here is the odds ratio of the enrichment, so like a 2.7 odds ratio and the y-axis color scale is a minus log 10 p-value of that odds ratio um, test. Um, and so here, this is what we use, for example, to find that some gene list for AHSD um, had um, a layer two and a layer five uh, specific signal. Um, um, some genes for like schizophrenia also showed some layer specificity. Uh, so this is how you can try to like uh, incorporate or tie together your gene list um, from other studies. So from GWAS or PWAS or differential expression with the layer level data that we have right now. Um, so I think this is um, uh, potentially quite of interest to some of you because um, you might have um, your set of gene lists that you want to explore quickly here. Another one that is more complicated is this stat correlation one where um, if you compute the same enrichment uh, these statistics, so that's one layer versus everything else, but on your, let's say on your single nucleus data. So in this particular, uh, here on the x-axis we have, um, I think it's around like 30 single nucleus uh, clusters. And so we, if we compute the enrichment statistics on that single nucleus um, data or single cell data, um, and then correlate the t-statistics that you see on your single nucleus data versus the t-statistics that we see on our uh, layer level data, you can then have, um, you can then compute the Spearman correlation, which is shown here from minus eight to eight in like dark purple to green. And so the dark green um, spots here are like, oh, these are highly correlated um, uh, spots between, um, uh, the genes are markers for here clusters 22, 3, 23, 17, 21, et cetera, and the white matter ones. So these are, um, uh, I forget where this data set comes from. I think it's from, um, yeah, Matt's data. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you can use this if you want to try to annotate your um, single cell data um, uh, uh, using the layer, layer specific information. Uh, because be before this, people, what would they do is they would like find differential expressions across your um, your different uh, single cell clusters, and then look at those genes and see if they match anything that is previously known. So white matter, uh, the oligodendrocytes uh, clusters are kind of easy, uh, but like some of them, other ones, um, sorry, one of these, um, some of the other ones are um, harder. Uh, sorry, or more interesting. So let me show that on the slides. Um, so for example, here's the Maddie's et al. data from 2019. And they have like also like 30 or something uh, single cell clusters. And we can see that they have like multiple excitatory neuron clusters. And now we can see that like, oh, actually excitatory neuron 2046 are mostly like layer two and three enriched versus 14, one, five, seven, and eight, which are like either four or five. Um, and there's, there's also some of them here that are like mostly like layer six um, excitatory neuron clusters. So this can be uh, quite um, 
like a way of what we call uh, spatially registering your single cell or single nucleus data. Um, um, and so if you actually wanted to do this, it, it, it's maybe not as, um, you need a bit of work outside of the website to prepare the data to then be able to make heat maps like this. Um, because you need to compute this uh, enrichment statistics for your um, for your single cell data. Um, so um, that's basically what this website does. Um, 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 and there's a bit of help. There's more documentation and stuff like that. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop the recording. If I quiet.